And uh, just let me do a minute to do an introduction for our Twitter friends. By the way, everyone that's here and coming on, if you would go ahead and tell a little bird over there on the left-hand side of your screen, there's a blue little tweet button, and you can go ahead and tell a little bird. And um, someone here without um, uh, no webcam, but we can we can still talk, or you can put your comments down here. Oh, it's it's um, Marguerite. Okay. <laughs> Not a problem. Let me post this tweet here. All right. And all right. So let's just give Heidi a minute more. And let me just go ahead and bring up my X split screen for a moment so I can do um, a formal introduction again. All right. So we're going into the after show of the Inspirational Businesswoman show today. And we're talking about empowerment magic. And here comes Heidi now. Coming on in, Heidi. That's great. All right. And again, what we were talking about over on uh, the Hangout on Air, thank you for those of you who are following us on over there. We were talking about empowerment magic and how you can use it to create your own destiny. We discussed things like uncovering your inner beliefs that hold you back and keep you stuck. So you can get through that stuckness into a whole new sense of destiny. And here comes Heidi now. We talked about uh, simple techniques to transform self-doubt and change your destiny. And Heidi took us through a wonderful exercise. It was very brief, but it gave us the idea of the magic she created in her own life and how she does this to help empower other people in their lives. And then we talked briefly about stopping the relationship in your personal and business life. So welcome, Heidi, over to Blab. Thrilled to have you here. Can't hear you. Yeah, I was muted because my husband was doing things that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, All right. Good. Okay. So we're going to invite people in. Um, so those of you who are arriving, if you don't have a camera, that's fine. But we'd love to hear from you. And let's talk about, let's go a little deeper here, Heidi, with some of this. First of all, I think it's important that the people, you know, that are following over from the, the Hangout or people are joining us new from Twitter get a little more background on you because you have a long, extensive history on how you use these magical strategies in your own life. So where do you want to share with people that we didn't get as, into as deeply as I think might be beneficial? Go ahead with that. You know, um, I think the more I grow up, the more I use all these tools. You know, I was about 40 or something when my real awakening process began. I hear an echo. Is this uh, for you too? I am having trouble hearing you. You're very quiet. Is there some way you can turn up the volume on your speaker? Or get a little closer. Yeah, right, William. The mic is low, and I don't know what would have changed it from the hangout. Yeah. But there you go. No, now, now, yeah. This is now my external microphones has switched on. There is no reliable way of uh, of having it on or not. Sometimes it works when I re put it in and out, and then okay, now it's on. Hopefully, Good. it stays. Yeah, it's so much better. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Now, I wanted to say that many of the techniques I'm teaching, I'm still using. Some I don't anymore because, you know, it, it, you, you need certain tools for certain areas of your life, for certain, let's say, parts of your life. And then when you have done that, then it's okay. And then you t take others. But for instance, the, the breathing and the um, uh, relaxation uh, tools I'm teaching, I'm, I'm using it. The, the 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 exercises to to calm the emotions, no? Like oh, here you are, Margarita. Like fear or or over excitement or your know, stage fright or something. You know, there are a lot of simple tools which I have learned, and I'm still using that because otherwise, we need a way during life when it is so so um, stressful. We need. Everybody needs to have a way to, to get themselves calm because otherwise we run around only like, you know, like men. 
<laughs> well, you know, Heidi, I think the breathing is one of the most overlooked. And as you know, as William was saying, one of the best tools in the world to change your physiology. And, you know, I, I always think about it, you know, we can go weeks without food. And yet we spend a lot more time thinking about what we're going to eat in a day than we do about our breathing. We can go, you know, really literally days without water, but we can't go more than a few minutes without our breath. And yet we so take it for granted and we don't pay attention to how we can control it and have it really calm and change the whole um, output of the central nervous system. So I, I think that uh, anything yeah. you can share on that, we sh let's go for it today. Yeah, I wouldn't even call it control it. I would call it expand it to 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 fill the whole body with the breath without uh, force, without pressing it in no place, but having it sort of fall into the body and 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 give the energy to to all parts of the body. Because most people are breathing like like this, you know, only up here or then they try for instance many singers when they begin to study they try to fill up the belly that's not it you know we need to it's the same thing like the psychological thing we we need to take off the barriers which hinder us from breathing deeply so that the breath can come easily and really fill us so uh, for me yes you can learn it but then you have also to not overdo it, you know, there's always this balance. When we overdo exercises, breathing exercises, then we get stiff and that's not what we want. Mm -hmm. So always, you know, <laughs> balance it out. All right, just unmuting myself here. Um, Margarita, welcome, so glad Yay. to see you. Yay. I'm so happy to be here. And and you have Heidi there and I I listened and I was on, on the other side of the room. And I, it's fabulous uh, that uh, Heidi is doing this, this uh, working with relationship. I, I, just, I, I just adore that. It's like so great and it's needed. It's like totally needed. I'm, I'm going to share something with you. I don't, I don't know what you'll think about this, but when I, and, and hold on just a second, coffee, we'd love to have you in just a second. Um, <laughs> when I did a lot of work on myself many years ago, which, I mean, you were always working on ourselves, right? But when I did a lot of work on myself many years ago, I processed a lot of what I would call the shit. <laughs> and I even had an amazing dream. You're not going to believe this dream. This dream was that I went down into my basement. Interesting, huh? Subconscious went down into my basement and everything was plugged up down there. And here's what I saw. You're going to get such a kick out of this. I saw conveyor belts full of shit moving around in my basement and going out of the basement as fast as they could go. It, they were piled high. Like if you've been to a farm, you know how they clean the shit out. So it's gone out of the house as fast as it's going and it still could not keep up with the shit that we were trying to get rid of. <laughs> so what do you think of that story? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Yeah, and we have to go to the basement. We really have to go into the basement and not fear to have uh, to, to for the dark which is there because the dark at the end comes into light, gets in, uh, trans transforms into light. Absolutely. All what is in the shadow when it can go in the light, then it is a treasure. So yeah, and, really, and don't fear. I have to tell you, after that dream and after that whole processing experience that I had, which in my case was done through um, gestalt therapy and hypnotherapy, mm. I felt so much lighter. I did. I mean, it was all subconsciously. My weight didn't I'm change at all, but I felt amazingly light after that experience. So that's Good called point. doing the work, isn't Absolutely. it, Heidi? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a whole different dimension of being, which is, um, which, which you don't know before yeah. that it exists. Beyond your wildest dreams is our, uh, our slogan, a relationship beyond your wildest dreams, because you couldn't imagine that it is as it is. So that's. I'm 62. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, do you have anything else, Margarita, that you want to share about uh, this whole process and, and what Heidi was sharing with us today? Yeah, it's like a necessary process for every person on this planet. And especially for older people who hasn't already started to do it because it's very important for a person before they die to have actually uh, sorted out that. I mean, whether you, you, you believe in past lives or future life, uh, but you can die peacefully. That's one thing. And then you can use the remaining time to be happy. My goodness, <laughs> that's, that's a no brainer. But people don't want to go into it because it's so painful in the beginning. It's so painful. And I mean, Heidi and I, we work similarly uh, with people uh, and, and these things. And, and you too, Virginia, with your hypnotherapy. Uh, it's like, uh, it's a no brainer, but it's not recognized for a person who hasn't discovered that they can do it, that they can clean that shit up yeah and it's exactly what i think our message is or our purpose in life all of three of us to tell people that it is possible you know and i'm i'm confident if you are about building for instance before you, you the show is a business women show when we have a other relationship to ourselves then we can create a different kind of work a different kind of business because before difficult you know it might somebody might do it as well you know like you know there are these people who do um agency you know no, do everything like this they will succeed too but people who are more introvert like like we are <laughs> they have uh, more difficulty hey William. hi ladies it's a pleasure to hang out with you guys great show great oh. show um uh, some of the things I mentioned in the show, you know, really kind of goes back to the shit uh, that I was dealing with with chronic pain, you know. And before I met people like Marguerite or, you know, any one of you ladies, I went through all those trials and tribulations with medication, trying to get better through medication. And now I walk 13,000 steps a day. Wow. It doesn't matter if it's snowing outside. Ooh. But, you know, I've got the Google Watch, I'm tracking everything, um, and that's exciting. But that's where a lot of people don't think they can get. And you guys, had, ladies had mentioned, it's kind of a hard thing to think about. Okay, even a guy having, you know, depression or all these different things, how do you get out of that, you know? And, it's, and, and it was, for me, it's a lot where I work out of my house. I don't work for a full-time company in the office i do go in once in a while but at the same time is i spend all my time here and i spent a lot of time with people like these shows today it's like okay breathing how do i deal with breathing you know how what does it mean when i'm breathing does it mean something where i can completely tune out reality and the hardest part for me was you know i do a session 5 30 in the morning every morning and it's 10 minutes but it takes me normally, it took me a long time just to stop focusing on, oh, do I have an email? Or do I have a text message I need to attend to? Or what do my meeting schedules look like for the morning? Instead, I focused on breathing and not focusing on those elements. But I also had an addition, which was an audio piece. So I actually have complete surround, you know, the headphones that go over complete, not the earbuds, because they don't do the same. So over the year, and then I just listened to uh, a relaxation tape that I got from one of my mentors. And, um, you know, it's 10 minutes long, but it's heartbeat. You can hear, you can start to hear your own heartbeat. If you can focus into that rhythm, then you can actually start to not focus on your breathing. You're just focused on your rhythm. And then at the same time as you have a clear mind, when you come out of 10 minutes of breathing like that, you and focus on the rest of your business day. And you can be more attuned to what that is versus for me, it was, okay, I couldn't even manage my pain, let alone work at an executive level that I am today, again. 
you know, but that's one of many things. You know, you go out and you take a walk and you look at the birds singing in the air, you know, take it, take a second to look at the ducks that are migrating or the geese that are moving from, you know, north to south. It's amazing when you start to open your eyes of what is else out there versus just computer work like I do. So. Well, I really appreciate your sharing that, William, because you, you're, You've shared a couple of big things. First of all, you're doing 13,000 steps a day. Wow. And that's, you can't help but get some breathing going. You can't help but move that stale air. But you're also doing something, it sounds like most mornings, 10 minutes you're spending with really yeah. conscious breath. I was in a wheelchair. So my goal, I was already on a cane. I was going to, my doctor prescribed the walker for me. And mm -hmm. I'm, I was at, the, you know, at that time, what, 38? So, you know, in the last couple of years, I've really changed because I don't want to be in that wheelchair. I've bound, bound and determined never even to go to Disneyland with the wheelchair. So uh, my next goal right now is the zoo. I want to go back and check out this, uh, the giraffes and the zebras. But in order to get there, I have to walk there and I have to be able to walk back. And so that's another accomplishment. And you have to set those goals. If you're going to try to get past chronic pain or depression or any of that, you can't focus on, I can't be in a dark room. I can't be shaded. I, I open the blinds. Let's look outside, get the light around me, you know? So. Great. Well, really great, William. Yeah, fabulous. Pat, you're, you're a great you're teacher in your own way because of what you have learned and the work you've done on yourself and you had physical limitations and I'm sure the physical limitations also added some more layers of shit. Didn't they do what you were having to work out? You go back into shoveling shit or even your dream, you know, back in the basement, it's like it brought back. Okay. Well, shoot. That's pretty much what I was shoveling with, with medication though. Ah. You know, when I was, I look back at some of the videos I started out back in like, what was it? When we first started all on Google Plus, I think it was like 2012, 2011 maybe, when we first started getting video sharing. And I was like, wow, I'm not going to come on video. And uh, one of my friends convinced me, because I always had my profile, never video, because I, I always felt that I was too medicated to show my face that, that I was afraid. And then... I could still speak clearly, but then I was like, okay, well, looking back at some of my videos, I'm like, well, I wasn't speaking very clearly. I could totally tell that, wow, where was I? And what, what mind frame was I in to where I am now, being able to speak back to the executive level, speaking next, uh, next month at a conference. I've never thought about standing up on stage. I can speak on the internet all day long, but standing on stage and waiting my turn you know, my, my spot's two o'clock in the afternoon. So I, I normally crash at three. So I've got to make sure I'm cool and I, I'm walking extra for that and preparing my body for that. So, so great. when did, how long did it take you to discover the importance of breathing in your own healing work? You know, there was a lot of different mentors that tried. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I, I I didn't think that some of the things that I would actually um, keep doing, I'm doing from certain men. And I, I'll I'll probably go back and man, man, name some of those names here soon. But there's so many people that the list goes on. Um, they all tried, and they were like, "Well, William, just try this." And then it finally got to uh, one coach that he's like, "Okay, I want to speak with you every week." We're going to go through what you're doing. You know, I know you're stressed out about your job, this and this and this. How can we actually get you to breathe again? So he would always focus on, okay, I'm talking, 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 but then and take a breath mm. and then speak again. And so me, my brain thinks so my uh, hundred miles an hour and, uh, <laughs> It's hard to slow myself down, but that's what I had to do is basically do just that. Slow down, breathe. And then even before I, I jump on live camera, it's breathe. Take a breath mm -hmm. or listen to, you know, my favorite's Enya. Uh, I'll, I'll go and listen to some Enya and just relax and then join the hangout. 
You know, I love Enya too, but uh, the point that you're really making is that that's a whole nother tool, Heidi. Wouldn't you agree that music, which of course is so much the foundation of what you have done and this, your singing career and your pre- your performance all those years, music is fundamental to mood. Both, you know, when I hear some of this, for me, god awful music that hurts the ears, uh, I can feel my tension increase. And when you're hearing something that's soft or melodic or, or just, you know, inspirational, uh, it's going to change your your whole feeling as well. So how else are you using music in your work, Heidi? Yeah, first I wanted to say to people, be careful what music you are listening to. Because uh, when you listen to music, which is even more arousing you, and it, it, it's, it's worse, you know. When you want to be in a quiet state, you need to, to find the, the right music for that. Music is extremely, extremely powerful, extremely powerful. And I think many young people sort of undervalue that. And how you also, music. You can also say, I, I would agree with that 100%. I want to say, because, you know, Enya, I mentioned Enya in the beginning. But it depends on what I have to be in the mood for. Am I going to have to be presenting and have to be really bold and, okay, so I'm going to listen to a bass or a violin or something that's going to, or piano, that's going to really bring that momentum. But good point. You have to choose your music because you can go really down the rabbit hole on that one. <laughs> yeah, or you can have the, the, the opposite effect of what you want to have, you know. So we really need to choose the music and, and, and not think, you know, what, for instance, for me, it's so difficult to understand the continuous music everywhere. You know, this is really, it is an influencing your mind without you even noticing it. Because even if you don't hear the music, but this, I mean, consciously, but it enters into it. So when it's in the, in the shops, these musics, um, especially when they are softer in some way, they try to, to manipulate you with music and you can do that. I mean, um, troops, for instance, manipulate the, the soldiers with music. We can do everything with music. We can go do the bad things, but we can also do the good things. And when we choose the right music, we can, it's magic too, Virginia, you know, what we can do with music. Yeah, for me, music is very important. When I was in a in a phase uh, when I was really in an identity crisis, let's say, and it, it is about, yeah, when, 40, uh, when I was 40, when I began with the whole, uh, let's say, spiritual, psychological journey, I always listen to Bach because Bach, or you say Bach in America, Johann Sebastian Bach, for me, it's putting the mind together again. You know, it's really setting my head straight. So it was really medicine for me to, to do that. And I still love to, to listen to, to him. So everybody finds their music for their purpose. Margarita? Marguerite, what do you want to share? Yeah, I have a question for Heidi because uh, she has some kind of course, uh, a very advanced course, but basic, I don't know. Can you tell us what what that includes? I, I wasn't part of the whole session before on the Hangout. You want to share what that is about? But you mean about voice and about music, or what do you mean? Well, you, you know, the relationship course there. That you ah, the relationship <laughs> course, yeah. Uh, what it is about, it is about... <laughs> overcoming the relationship, you know, as I'm doing practicing with Mark. I mean, we really, the first year, it was challenging because all the old things come up again. And when you don't have consciousness, you fall exactly into the same things. And when you don't have the tools, consciousness alone is a, is a good thing, but it's not, not really enough. You need also have to, to know what do you do different in certain situations than you always did before. So uh, I was fortunate enough to have done all these trainings. So I knew about it and he came with me and it's wonderful. You know, uh, it's we have created this relationship beyond our wildest dreams. And what we want to do together is to bring it to people. And it's, you know, even, I mean, I was 58, 59 when I met him. And he was almost 70 
So it's never too late. We finally can have the relationship which we dreamt of the whole life, you know? And I never thought it would still, I thought probably I will stay alone until the end of my life. No, I decided not to. I said, I want to find the partner. And I, I did. You did the work though. <laughs> and, you did the work. You know, yeah. It did work. It did work. And now we have created a course out of that for people over, over 50 to, to do exactly that work, at least begin with this work, because when you begin and keep on going, it is sort of psychoactive. It is going sort of by itself, not really by itself. You still have to, to do something, but the, the beginning is the, the, and the decision to do it. This is the most difficult thing. And then when, when you understand how, how, you know, beneficial it is when first of all you get really empowered when you see oh i can do something and i don't have to wait anymore or think oh gosh i will die without anybody alone uh, and these things i mean we are not we are too old we will never find a husband anymore when we are over 50 you know and all these well that's what i found strange that's beliefs found the level we have. Of my life and i really chose to be uh single for I don't know, 13 years. I mean, I just focused on raising my kids. And, you know, here's the other thing, Heidi, I think is really important. And that is that you do the work so that you feel really good in yourself and, and you don't need the relationship. The relationship becomes a wonderful bonus once you've done the work with yourself. But until you can get to the point that you feel, hey, I'm good with myself, whether I'm single or in a relationship, I think that's kind of key first. Yes, it, that's exactly what it is. When I finally uh, said, okay, I can also be alone for my whole life. It's no problem. I don't really need a partner. Two months later, yeah. he appeared. That's you know? the In the moment when you that's let go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is exactly right. And then, uh, you know, there are times uh, also in my life, I was alone twice for six years or even seven years. And it is needed to, to have a time alone, to know how we can go on ourselves, that we are not dependent to have a partner. Because when you are always dependent, you, you, never, you can never sort out where are you, who are you, and who is the other. Yeah. You need to really be for a while alone and uh, tolerate first the aloneness and later enjoy yes. it, <laughs> you know. And, and then you are open again for, for a relationship, but this relationship is different. It is not ever more this, oh, you know, yeah. this symbiotic thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that's just not yeah. good for or healthy for any relationship. If you, if you need each other, there's something that needs to be worked on. You don't need each other. You want to you know be that, with each other. That, that, there is a, a, a nice uh, thing. I I love you because I need you is one thing. I need you because I love you is That's another well thing. Fine. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Yeah. So the neediness, but unfortunately in young years, nobody teaches us these yeah. things. We have these ideas of the songs, how romantic love is, and I'm all for you. You are everything for me. Or this <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> Relationship. <laughs> Yeah, we create yeah. that out of the wrong ideas of what a relationship yeah. should be, yeah. you know, and this is too bad. We need we need to go out and tell also younger people that relationships they can learn and we, they don't have like me to, to I'm in the fourth uh, long term relationship with Mark because all the others more or less ended at the same place. Although I didn't want to, but it happened because I haven't done hadn't, hadn't done, done the, the work. work before yeah. so i love this topic well listen we're gonna let you go hey, hey margarita any last minute comments you want to share and and uh finish up uh again heidi after that with um where they can get more information on your show okay i i am so grateful virginia for your effort to reach women and uh, the topic today empowerment magic is awesome and I wish that you have anything that you want in your life and continue doing your good work. And then Heidi, we'll, we'll, we will uh, work our way together uh, in the future with, with, with blabs and stuff. And uh, 
You'll see us again. Yeah, Marsha's going to have your blabs at the same time having my show. So conflict. <laughs> I won't be there. <laughs> Oh, yeah. No, we, we do it twice a week. So the uh, Monday and on Thursday we will do it. So. Great, great. Okay, Heidi, where, where can they, again, get the uh, information on um, your show for the Wisdom Factory? There it is. Let me go ahead and type that in. It's bit.ly bit mm -hmm. uh, forward mm -hmm. slash Wisdom Factory. Yes. I think I did that wrong. Over the, I'm going to have to go fix it over on the Hangout. So it's bit dot ly forward slash wisdom factory slash mm -hmm. okay it is just in and this is in and hopefully okay, i spelled good. it right <laughs> check and see it's not showing up there it is wisdom bit dot ly. i will go fix it over on the hangout uh chat box as well. okay so yeah this is there. right well thank you thank this you so much fun. love the conversation um go out and keep empowering people and uh, keep building these wonderful, wonderful relationships. Uh, we need more of this type of relationship. Mark, sorry I haven't seen you in the background, but I know you're there. You want to stick your head in and say hi? I hey, uh, want to come for a moment and oh, show you hi. because she, he cannot hear. I have oh, the okay. earbuds. Let, let us open the... Okay. <laughs> He's not in his... In I'm his not dressed. I'm not ready for camera. <laughs> seeing you william thanks for bopping in you guys all have a terrific day and we'll look forward to you next week on the inspirational business woman after show on blab thanks everybody bye-bye now okay bye-bye